Hello, everybody, and welcome to another Tech Talk. It's been a long time since I last demonstrated a complete Arch Linux desktop installation using the Archway, so I thought today would be a great time to revisit right after this. Doing things the archway involves installing a lot of packages, which in turn means a whole lot of mind-numbing typing and experimentation to get the right ones installed, which can be error-prone as well. Now you can script the installation using arch install or other tools, but another way would be creating text files with simple package lists that you can keep modular, declarative, and reproducible. You can then install all the packages you want in a file using a simple pacman command. So I'm going to try this out with the September 2022 ISO. Let's see what happens. So the first thing I have to do is edit in a kernel parameter for my screen resolution. We'll make it video equals 1920 by 1080. And then we'll hit F10 to boot up the Arch ISO. And it's coming up. And there we go. Tiny fonts, let's fix that with set font ter 128n or terminus 128n. So IPA shows a valid IP address for my local private network. If you don't have one um, and you have a uh, wireless card, IWCTL uh, utility is for you. So you can type something like station WLAN 0, connect, and then your SSID or your network name. But uh, our uh, networking is functional, so we'll move right along. LSBLK shows the target disk to be dev VDA, as you can see, 64 gigs. So reflector, let's make it uh, country is US where I am. Yours may be somewhere else. Latest five uh, mirror updates, and we'll <laughs> sort by rate, transfer rate. And we'll save it to Etsy pacman.d mirror list. And that will take a little bit. So we make sure we get the, uh, the freshest, fastest uh, repo mirrors for Arch Linux for our installation. Let's uh, fix the pacman.conf file in Etsy and enable parallel downloads equals five. Works pretty well for me, maybe for you as well. All right, let's uh, do a time date CTL set dash NPT NTP true for network time protocol. And then we'll make sure our databases are up to date. And looks like they are now all synchronized. So let's partition the disk GDisk dev VDA, a new partition uh, one. Uh, first sector is default. Last sector will make this uh, partition 512 megabytes, and we'll make it the EFI, EFI system partition with EF00 code, and we'll call it the boot partition. New, uh, and then the rest of the disk will make it the uh, uh, stay with defaults and make it a Linux file system. And we'll call the second partition root, because that's going to be the root file system, the root partition, rather. So if we print it, as you can see, this is our configuration, very simple. Two partitions, so we'll write it to disk, and we've got our disk partitioned. So let's uh, format the EFI partition with VFAT. We'll name it boot slash dev VDA1. And for the root partition, we'll make it ButterFS. We'll label it root slash dev slash VDA2. Notice the switches are slightly different. Uh, no consistency there. All right, there it is. So let's mount our ButterFS root file system with mount dev VDA2 on slash mount. Let's CD into slash mount. And uh, then we'll do a ButterFS subvolume create at, that's our root subvolume, do the same for home and also for snapshots. 
and for var. I like this uh, setup. Uh, it works very well for me. Maybe it does for you as well. Let's unmount slash mount and remount it by uh, doing mount dash O for options. Compress equals Z standard. Level one, good uh, compromise between speed and compression. No access time for SSDs. Subvol equals at for a root subvolume slash dev slash VDA2 on slash mount. Good. Now let's create our mount points here with make dir dash p slash mount open curly brace boot slash EFI home uh, dot snapshots where our snapshots, snapper snapshots are stored and var close curly brace. Good. Now that we've got our mount points, let's mount them. So up arrow for uh, command history. Let's do the same thing for home. Next, uh, let's do this for snapshots. And I'll be slash mount dot snapshots. Keep in mind, kind of hidden. Um, and then finally, uh, at var for the var subvolume, and it'll be mount slash var. And there we go. So our ButterFS subvolumes are all mounted. Finally, we also want to mount our EFI boot partition with uh, devvda1 on mount boot EFI. So an LSBLK should show all of our partitions mounted, including our subvolumes, as you can see. All right. So next, um, let's pack strap some basic packages here. So on slash mount, base, nano, open SSH, reflector, and finally rsync. And hit return. And there we go. So that installs the basic framework for arch install on slash mount on our target disk. Let's generate the file system table with uh, UUID uh, style uh, mounts. And let's uh, redirect that to mount at CFS tab. Because then we can uh, change root with arch to root into slash mount. Let's do a quick uh, sanity check for a file system table and etsy fs tab. And uh, looks like it pulled in the correct options, including space underscore cache equals version two, fully automatic. So that looks good. So we can continue with linking uh, user share zone info America Los Angeles which is my local time zone uh, to Etsy local time again your location may be different check the zone info files for your location let's uh, hardware clock uh, sync it up to from system to hardware and we want to have the clock, hardware clock, as universal time coordinated, or UTC. Let's run Reflector again and set up our mirror list for the package uh, repos. Uh, my country is US again, same as before. Uh, latest five, we'll sort by rate, or speed, if you will. And we'll save it to Etsy, pacman.d uh, mirror list. And it looks good, hit enter. Let Reflector do its thing. So it goes through a whole bunch of mirrors and uh, sorts them accordingly. All right, so pacman-syy, just to make sure this is a rolling release, things are constantly updated. We wanna make sure we're up to date with our re repository databases. So let's do a nano etsy locale.gen. And We'll just uh, uncomment this. This works very well for me. Again, change it to your locale as you need so that we can run locale-gen. And there we go. It's that simple. Let's echo the language localization equal en underscore us dot utf dash eight. And hit read and uh, uh, redirect it to etsy uh, locale.conf 
There we go. So the localization is done, or locale rather. So let's uh, do the host name, Echo Archie One. It's going to be our host name today for this system. We'll redirect it to Etsy host name. Next, we're going to uh, edit with nano Etsy hosts. So the first line is always 127.0.0.1 will be localhost. Same for IPv6, which is colon colon one, also points to localhost. 127.0.1.1 points to archie1.local domain. And the alias is archie1, which is our host name. Looks pretty good to me, so we're going to write it out. So the host file is done. Moving right along, let's do nano etsy pacman.conf and let's enable um, multiple parallel downloads. Leave that as at five. Works very well for my internet connection. You may want to adjust this depending on your speed of your internet connection. Okay, so. What I'm going to do is I'm going to copy, secure copy from my local NAS I set up for this video today, uh, my package list uh, uh, tarball, uh, which is a bunch of text files that contain um, all the packages I want to install. Um, so let's uh, unpack my packlist.tgz. So I, these are pre-prepared that I've done for you today for this video demo. So what you can do is you can just create these X files yourself. It's just a list of packages that you want installed. So base.packlist.txt shows a bunch of basic packages that um, are, are a good start for your uh, install. And you can just uh, pause this video as you see fit, and you can copy these down uh, yourself using Nano, if you will, or Vim if you prefer. So just Pause the video, and uh, it's a lot of typing that I won't bore you with today. So this is a simple text file. The list of packages. So uh, what you can do is install all these packages by doing pacman dash capital S dash dash needed. So you don't download unneeded uh, packages. So they're already there, for example. And uh, greater than uh, base.packlist.txt which is the file. And as you can see, it'll just install. So happens very quickly. Um, so let's look at base two. So again, pause the video as you see fit, add and remove packages as you see fit. Um, so I'm just gonna scroll a little bit here. Again, pause as needed. So this is additional base packages that I have uh, set up as a simple text file. So let's install it with the same command as before. So quite a few things uh, already there. So we'll just do all for default and let all these additional base packages install. Okay, that's done. Next, um, I've set up a uh, network or net.packlist.txt. And these are the files I have for networking. As you can see, I have FileZilla and Firefox and Firewall Daemon as well, Network Manager. Good stuff, let's install it. So I'm using pipewire-jack, so I select two here. And the default is hit return. And go ahead with the install. And it's done. Okay, uh, so next let's take a look at my print uh, text list. So as you can see, it's cups and go script, script and some Python utilities. And that's it, pretty, pretty much standard stuff for printing. So we'll just uh, install those print packages. Again, pause the video anytime you see fit. This down. Uh, next, I'd like to show you my media package list file. So I'm using uh, some ALSA packages, 
GStreamer, and of course all the Pipewire stuff, including Pipewire-Jack, which I just talked about. And uh, yeah, those are is the extent of my packages for uh, uh, media. So um, let's install those. Very simple. Just uh, use this Pac-Man command. And away we go. All right. So media is installed. What's next? Um, let me show you my GNOME desktop environment. So this is my GNOME um, with a bunch of fonts that I've added, et cetera, et cetera. Nothing too special here. You can add i3 or other window managers. Uh, uh, GDM, which will be included in this package, will, um, will offer you a choice if you have multiple desktop environments. So let's install GNOME. So let's do default all, hit return, default all, hit return, hit return, hit return, um, install everything, hit return. Okay, so uh, make sure you, for your desktop environment, you choose the correct XDG package. So number one is for GNOME, which is what we're installing today. So let's set all those GNOME packages install, a whole bunch of them. And we're done through creative video editing. I'm able to skip over a lot of this stuff. So uh, that's done. System install. Let's uh, give root a password. Enter the password twice. Next, let's user add my account. Let's create the home directory with dash m, add the groups with dash g. Groups are sys, log, network, floppy, scanner, Power, RF kill, users, video, storage, optical, LP for line printer, audio, of course, wheel for sudo, ADM for admin, I suppose, pretty standard. The shell with dash s will be slash bin slash the shell. And my username will be Steven, of course with a line break in there. So let's give myself a password, password Steven. New password, type it once and type it twice. For good measure, looks like that worked. Okay, so let's export visual, since we've got only nano, not vim here. Uh, let's export visual as nano. So I can uh, vi sudo etsy sudoers. So I want to enable the wheel group to be able to sudo. Let's remember the wheel group, this will work. So we'll uncomment to allow members of group wheel to execute any command. There we go. All right, that's done. Wheel group is enabled. Okay, so let's install grub with grub dash install dash dash target equals x86 underscore 64 dash EFI, it's an EFI machine today, dash dash EFI dash directory equals slash boot slash EFI. And then for the firmware entry, we do bootloader ID equals Arch Linux. This will show up uh, when you boot to BIOS, you can, uh, can select Arch Linux in your firmware. EFI firmware. Okay, looks like no error reported. All's good. Let's grub dash mk config dash o for options slash boot slash grub slash grub dot cfg. Looks like that worked. Okay. Again, I'm going pretty quick here. Just pause it as you see fit. Let's edit make init copy io.conf and etsy directory. I want to let the system know. In case I have to repair the file system, if something goes wrong, that we're, this is a ButterFS system. So we put binaries equals ButterFS in parentheses. That's all we have to do with this file. And uh, cool, then we can do a make init copy IO dash P uh, Linux. We have the standard mainline Linux kernel here. Looks like that was successful, including creating the fallback image. Uh, system CTL. 
enable some services here. Check the ArchWiki uh, for these if you want to learn more about them. So Avahi Daemon uh, to enable. Also uh, Bluetooth that service. Then I'd like to enable DHCP client daemon dot service and also the have good service for randomization. Again, ArchWiki has all articles for this stuff. Oops, printing. Next, um, I'd like to enable the firewall daemon. Always good to have. And then next we want the file system trim timer for your SSD. If you don't have an SSD, you don't bother with, the, with trim. But I do, so I'd like to enable that. The uh, display manager, gdm.service, you want enabled. Otherwise, you don't have a login screen, right? Also want to enable network manager. And also for locating files on your file system with plocate-update-db.timer. So that uh, goes through your file system regularly and uh, allows you to locate files. We'll also enable secure shell daemon. Again, this is a local private networks, but you may not want to have it enabled if you're on a public network. And also the micro or uPower uh, for power savings. There we go. All our services are enabled. So we can exit the uh, ch Chirrut shell and unmount everything that we can that's not busy. And we'll just do a reboot and see what happens. Proceeding with fingers crossed. There we go. Very quick boot. And there's GDM. So we select the user. You can see we have all the GNOME standard options. We'll stick with GNOME, the top choice, which is a Wayland session. Again, if you installed i3 or whatever, you would have that there as well. Okay, so a little housekeeping here. Let me just go into settings. If you bear with me, guys. It's got to fix some things here, such as the uh, appearance. I'm going to switch it to dark. I want to change the wallpaper. Arch Linux wallpapers are cool, so I'm going to select this one. Um, I also will want to turn off Screen Blanker, since this is demo, right? Screen Blank and Automatic Suspend, I like to have off. So it doesn't turn off on us while I'm showing you guys these things. Let's fix the screen resolution uh, to 1920 by 1080 and click on Apply, Keep Changes. Okay, that's a small font, so let's fix that. Let's enable in accessibility large text. Date and time, I always want to make sure network time protocol is enabled for automatic date and time. Just like that works. Los Angeles, United States is my correct time zone. And here's our about screen. 42.4, Wayland session. Running on a KVM, kernel virtual machine. Fedora 36, if you must know. That's what I run. Okay, uh, tweaks. I just want to um, uh, enable on the Windows title bars the maximize and minimize title bar buttons. Okay, and that's it for general housekeeping. So next, let's launch um, a terminal here. Ooh, that's white and glaring. Let's fix that. I'm going to go to preferences. I'm going to uh, modify this uh, profile, turn off the bell, go to GNOME Dark, and then we'll uh, hide the scroll bar and unlimit the scroll back history. We'll call his profile Steven's profile, or Steven. There we go. Because that's how I roll. All right, so let's make that font a little bigger and make it full screen with F11. So there we go. Our system is pretty functional, but we want to enable AUR, right? So git clone https colon slash slash aur dot .org slash paru because paru is my favorite aur helper so we build it cd paru and we just make package dash si should build paru so we'll enter the sudo password for myself and sudo is working we'll just do the defaults here and proceed with installation 
let it build. All right, proceed with installation, yes. And we're done. Z shell is great, it shows you where you are on your kit. Okay, Paru. Paru is working great. So let's remove our build directory. Okay, because now that we have the AUR, we can start install Snapper and all the helper packages. So I'll do that by typing Paru dash S snapper dash support and that helper package is from the garuda team thanks go to them so saves me a little bit of typing so snapper support sets everything up for you still have to configure right so uh, let's do that uh, first off let's uh, become root root shell let's switch to the root directory and let's unmount slash.snapshots because when we uh, configure Snapper, it recreates them, right? So we have to get rid of them first. So unmount and remove the .snapshots directory. We'll do the root configuration with Snapper C root create config slash. And then we do uh, butterfs subvol list the root subvolume. And as you can see, the snapper root create configuration gave us an extra superfluous dot snapshot subvolume. So let's remove it. So we do butterfs subvol delete slash dot snapshots. And there we go, that happens. So let's list again. And as you can see, the extraneous dot snapshot subvolume uh, is gone now. So we're back to, the, back to where we need to be. So let's recreate this directory with makedir.snapshots and remount it with mount-a because it's still in our file system table in Etsy. As you can see, we have all partitions and all subvolumes properly mounted again. Fantastic. All right. So uh, butterfs subvol get def slash or get default is id5 top level file system tree so we want bootable snapshots so we need to change that to the root subvolume we're at so if i do a list of all the subvolumes you can see this top one id256 is the path at that's the root subvolume that we want to boot from so let's set the default with butterfs subvol set dev 256 slash and it's listed again uh, the alt default is 256. Perfect. So now the snapshots uh, are pointing in the right direction. So snapper ls shows that we don't have any snapshots. Snapshot zero is our current file system state, right? So it's no snapshots found. So let's edit the uh, config um, with vim. Because what I want to do is um, allow groups wheel so that any sudoer can can access the uh, snapper list snapshot list number limit is 10 going to change these to what i think the arch wiki has something similar and check check the arch wiki uh, for details on how to configure this they have some good suggestions there so yeah i set weekly monthly and yearly timeline limit to zero and we're done Okay, so let's chone uh, recursive colon wheel slash dot snapshots. So let's exit. Let's test and see as a standard user if we can do a uh, snapper ls. And as you can see, it works. So we don't have to be root anymore. Okay. So let's become, let's get, get a root shell again and uh, proceed. Let's go to the root directory and let's systemctl enable the service uh, now please with dash dash now grub dash butterfs.path and that enables the snapshot manager or monitor for the uh, grub uh, boot menu for, for snapshots. So if you check the status it says here it's successful started monitors for new snapshots so when automatic snapshots occur uh the grub uh snapshot menu gets automatically updated 
other videos of mine and other people's uh, go into detail with that. So let's grub dash make config dash o boot grub slash grub dot config. Got to do this quite a bit just to make sure that the snapshots and the arch the arch grub boot menu are synch synchronized. So no snapshots found yet. But everything else is is good. There's no error. Um, I don't think an error has occurred. So um, let's uh, do a system CTL enable dash dash now snapper dash timeline dot timer. So every hour it does an automatic snapshot. Don't have to do this. This is what I generally do. And we'll do a snapper uh, cleanup dot timer. Looks like that's enabled already. Um, so we're good. So it, uh, it cleans up after itself, after a certain number of number of snapshots. So let's create our first uh, root snapshot with snapper C root create. We'll describe it as, in quotes, asterisk, 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 base system configuration. So if something goes wrong with further configuration, we can always roll back the system to this. It's always a good idea to, when you first install a system, to have a manual snapshot performed. And that's what ButterFS and rolling distributions are all about. So we'll synchronize the uh, grub menu with grub-makeconfig-o boot grub grub.cfg. You may want to create a script for this since you're going to do this a lot uh, to make sure you're synchronized at all times. It looks like it found a snapshot this time, so the monitor is functional. Okay, let's exit. Let's do a snapper ls, and as you can see, even as a regular user, our manual snapshot is listed. Okay, let's do some more installation. Let's do uh, paru-s zram generator. We haven't configured swap partition here. We want swap to zram, a compressed ram. So, as you can see, it does a pre-snapshot and a post-snapshot, or snapshots two and three. We can do a snapper ls. So you can see, so every Pac-Man or Paru operation does a pre and post snapshot so you can roll back in case you make a mistake with installation or uninstallation. sudo etsy systemd zram-generator.conf. So let's configure our zram swap, our swap to compressed RAM. zram0 is our virtual uh, zram device. The ZRAM size will be uh, physical RAM divided by four. So this is eight gigs physical RAM. So we're configuring for about two gigs a swap, and that's fine for this demonstration. So sudo systemctl daemon dash reload, because we redid the systemd configuration just now. And then we'll do a sudo systemctl start slash dev slash ZRAM zero. All right, so then free-h shows that we've got uh, our swap functioning. So we've got ZRAM, and it's working great. Nice and fast uh, swap solution, especially for SSDs. So let's install a couple other things. Uh, we want uh, doof and neofetch. As you can see, it... Uh, a couple new snapshots pre and post four and five respectively there you go fully automatic snapper ls shows you kind of our history like a diary of sorts of the changes we made to the system that you can roll back as you see fit so doof shows uh what we've got here um it's a good overview for you guys you can pause the video here if you want to take a closer look so 5.9 gigs uh, disk space used. Not bad. It's just under 800 megs RAM usage, which is not bad for a full GNOME uh, desktop environment. So let's uh, reboot the system. And uh, here we go. Let's do a fresh boot. We log in. So everything's working. Got a nice simple GNOME 42.4, I think, uh, desktop environment. Again, you can add i3, you can go knock yourself out with window managers, 
see fit. Very sim similar operation. So let's launch the uh, terminal. And let's become root here. Yeah, so we've got a little cleanup, left a little mess here in the root directory. As you can see, we've got our package list files here. So if you don't need them anymore, you can get rid of them. Also the uh, TGZ uh, package tarball. There we go. So um, let's do a neofetch. And there you go. It's under a gig, just under a gig used. If you allow the system to settle down, it will use even less. Again, very not bad for a GNOME default uh, Arch install system. Whoa, that was something. I've tested this on real hardware and everything works great with the added security blanket of having bootable snapshots handy for this bleeding edge rolling distro. I hope this demo will give you a solid foundation for further explorations of Arch Linux. If you made it this far, thanks so much for watching please do smash that like button and subscribe. It helps a lot. Until next time, take care.